going, Emmy? Hey, hey, you know Oh, no. I couldn't possibly go out that far. I told you I... Cut! Oh, I'm sorry, Val. I'm frightfully tired. But, Sheila, we've been in Honolulu a week and haven't done two days' work. I know. I'll work as late as you wish tomorrow, but I can't go on now. Don't ask me, please. All right. Eight o'clock in the morning and don't be late. Oh, thanks, Sal. You know what's really the matter with her, don't you? She has an engagement with that Alan Jane she met on the boat. Is she gonna marry that guy? I don't know. What time did Tonavero say to be there? Four o'clock. Oh, hurry up, Anna. Get me out of this. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Hello there. Hello. Where's Sheila? In the dressing room? Yes. Hey, what's the idea? I haven't seen you yet today. No, you can't till I've seen Sheila. Oh, forget Sheila for a while. Take a moment to enjoy the palms of paradise. Save that gag for the tourists. I'm sick of the tourists. I want to sell Honolulu to you. Hello, Julie. Well, what are you doing out here? I think I have a little surprise for you. Look. That's no surprise to me, dear. I sent for him. Sheila, all the way from Hollywood? Yes, all the way from Hollywood. I want his advice. I need him now more than I ever needed him in all my life. You mean about marrying Alan? Yes. Oh, darling, can't you even get married without asking Tanavero? You simply don't like him, Julie. It isn't that. I'm afraid of him. Sometimes I think he has you completely under his influence. Oh, nonsense. He's never given me anything but the very best of advice. Julie! Julie! Is that that long, slim press agent of yours? Oh, he isn't the press agent, Sheila. He's the publicity director of the whole island. And the Rotary Club and the Chamber of Commerce and everything. No, really. Well, you're not in love with him, are you? Oh, no. How could you say such a thing? Julie! Yes, Mr. Bradshaw. I'm coming. Darling, remember, you're having friends for dinner. So please don't let Talavera upset you. Promise me? You're a sweet child, Julie. But there are some things you know absolutely nothing about. And Talavera is one of them. Now, let's not talk about it anymore. You go home and worry about the dinner tonight. Can you see me now, sweetheart? Shh. Don't let Sheila hear you call me that. She'd think it pretty sudden for just one week. Well, she's only known Alan Jane's a week. Besides, what do I care about her? Well, I care. Things would have been pretty tough for me if it hadn't been for Sheila. Yeah, listen, I just thought of another swell slogan. Don't dream about a dream, own one. You and your slogan. What does that one mean? That one means you and a sweet little bungalow nestling under two mortgages. Oh. Jimmy! <laughs> These are sad occasions, aren't they, Alan? Last ride. You know, Sheila, this doesn't have to be our last ride. But you're sailing at midnight. I know, and I want you to sail with me. But what about my picture? I must finish that. Oh, never mind the picture. Let's get married this afternoon. And then we can talk about what we'll do. Darling, I don't even know that we can get married at all. But if we can, I promise to tell you tonight before you sail. But, but if you can tell me tonight, why can't you tell me now? There's a perfectly good reason. Look here. This appointment at the hotel. That hasn't anything to do with you not marrying me, has it? It has a lot to do with it. All for Mr. Tommy Barrow, please. The oh, pigeon is. Chinese merchant to see you at the desk, sir. Chinese merchant? Yes, sir. Strange. You will excuse me. Well, we'll see you later on. Who? No, what case? No, 
No case, just clues. I'm pretending to be Chinese merchant. Do not mention police. Go away. You want me to investigate? Yes. Take streetcar. Go far away. Investigate there a long time. And remember, wages of stupidity is hunt for new job. Oh, I, I understand. Thank you so much. Have I pleasure of meeting Tanavero the Great? Lifter of veils, peeker into mystery of future? You have. Uh, like a shadow follows man, so fame has followed you from Hollywood. Thanks. And you are... Uh, 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 alas, <laughs> mouse cannot cast shadow like elephant. Oh. <laughs> I am humbly insignificant Chinese merchant assailed by many doubts. Chinese merchant? You have flattered me by calling me a lifter of veils. Allow me to lift yours. Uh, shall I say, Captain? <laughs> no, no. Inspector Chan, Honolulu Police. Your business with me? Uh, rumor announced you have been sightseeing in, uh, in uh, Crystal Glow. Yes, but not professionally. Ah, most happy. Because supernatural powers of fortune tellers make very bad smell in nostrils of Honolulu. Uh, perhaps, after all, uh, my psychic powers may not be any more supernatural than yours. We are both detectives. You look backward, I look forward. Possible. But it was not psychic powers told you I'm police officer, <laughs> but uh, pinholes of badge recently removed. Huh? Quite right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, such skill as yours should be at service of public. Are you flatter? No, no. Hollywood is famous furnisher of mysteries. Uh, cases amazingly interesting. Uh, any particular case? Ah, yes. Murder of handsome face actor Denny Mayo. Dead now, three years. Whole world ask questions. Police answer, always same, nothing. Perhaps a fortune teller could do better, eh? Oh, possibly. Yes. Always harder to keep murder secret than for egg to bounce on sidewalk. You will pardon me. I have an appointment. Eh? Not professional. Thank you so much. Goodbye, darling. I shan't be long. Come quite early for dinner before the others, will you? I'll be hours early. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. oh, Tano Vero. What a relief to find you here. I knew I could depend on you. Oh, Oh, I have so much to tell you. On the boat, I need... Ray, don't tell me. Let me tell you. You've helped me so many times. Do you think you can help me now? I simply must... Help. I try. Sit here. Think. Think of the matter that troubles you. I have a very important decision to make. Now let's... Wait. I see a man, wealthy, attractive, who stands with him at the rail of a ship. He asks you a question. Something stops your answer. You love him. Oh, I do. I do love him, Tanavero. I want to say yes. I want some happiness. 
I think I've earned a little. But you fear something. Perhaps something in the past. No. No. Yes. I see. I see. How long ago? Oh, it was something that happened three years ago in June. I see. Newspaper headlines. Round the startled word. Police courts. Investigation. Innocent names dishonored. Public officials disgraced. Do say Oh, no. Stop, stop. I shouldn't have come. Penny. No, I can't. I'm afraid. Uh, will you tell me or must I tell you? Oh, please, please. I see a dead man thumbed over a desk. A lifeless arm hangs at his side. Danny Mayo. Oh, wait. I'll tell you. Look, can anyone be out there? No. There is no one. Why? Oh. I had a feeling someone else was listening to us. No, no. We are absolutely alone. Well, I was in Jenny Mayo's last three pictures. I fell madly in love with him. I was in his house that night he was murdered. You've been crying. What's happened? Oh, nothing. Can't you tell me? Is it something about Alan? Yes. I can't marry him, and I've got to tell him. Why can't you? Sheila, did Talavera advise you oh, not to... Oh, please, Julie, leave me alone. Sheila, pull yourself together, please. You know you want to look your best for the blues tonight. Yes, I know. I'll be all right, dear. Now, you run along. I want to be alone. All right, darling. Jimmy and I are going for a swim. One three one three, please. The Royal Theater. I'd like to speak to Mr. Robert Fife. Yes, the actor. What's the matter, Anna? Nothing. Well, something's happened. You look as if you'd seen a ghost. You're not happy here, Anna. Let's leave. 
go somewhere else. Oh, Jessup, please. We've settled all that, and you promised you wouldn't bring it up again. I don't want to hurt you, but I don't love you. But I love you, and you're in trouble. There isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do to help you. Well, wait for severe attention to be settled. I'll make a word with you. Excuse me, please. What's the trouble? My name is James, Alan James. I want you to explain why you advised Sheila Fane not to marry me. Sorry, I never discussed what goes on at my readings. You'll discuss this, all right, you cheap faker. Please, the public place. I don't care where we are. Aren't you being a bit silly, Mr. James? A thousand pardons. The assault and battery not permitted without license from Boxing Commission. Just hold you. Oh, I offended the young man quite unintentionally. By the way, Inspector, how do you plan to spend the evening? I attend Rotary Club uh, banquet here at hotel. Good, then you'll be here for some time. Terribly possible. Very few after-dinner speeches equipped with the self-stopper. <laughs> I may have a very important message for you tonight. What message? Would you be surprised if I should ask you to arrest the murderer? No. All foxes come at last to first door. What, murderer? No, I mustn't say too much. There is many a slip. You quench fire on my curiosity with a handful of straw. No clue. What? Took long ride on streetcar. Nothing. Kashimo, do me a favor. Yes. Spend more time hunting for nothing to do. I just thought of a smart slogan for a dentist. How's this? The tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth. Oh, Jimmy, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm finding the water. Is that oh. necessary, Van? A toast to our absent hostess, eh? Where's Sheila? Isn't she down yet? The old Hollywood complex. She's waiting to make a grand entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's in the pavilion. Come on, Jimmy, let's go. You bet. The last time we waited for Sheila's entrance was at Denny Mayo's, wasn't it? Now, see here, Van, if you're going to... Don't even breathe Denny's name. If you do, Wilkie will start throwing things. <laughs> well, Jane, why don't you join us? Thank you. I will. Later, never. Come on, Sheila. The stage is all set. I'll go in and escort her. Don't. Don't go in there. Why not? What's the matter? Let's go back. Let me go. Don't. Julie. Sheila. Sheila! But we mustn't do that. What for? Don't ask any questions. Take it quick before someone sees it. Oh, but Julie, if you... Hurry, hurry, give it to me. <laughs> so the Pompous Hotel clerk says to me, you can't go upstairs without being announced. Is Mrs. Smith expecting you? And I said, listen, Mrs. Smith was expecting me before I was born. Mrs. Smith is my mother. <laughs> Look at Julie. What's happened? Shh. 
Sheila's dead. What did you say? She's been murdered. What are you saying? Where is she's she? She's out in the pavilion. Don't go out there. Don't anybody go out there. I'm going to notify the police. If any message just come for me, I shall be back about 11. Very well. Tomorrow. Hello there, Inspector. Have you finished your dinner? No. I am rudely wrenched away by important business. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, very interesting. Miss Sheila Payne was just now murdered in her home. Sheila? It's impossible. You were just now on your way to her house? Yes, of course. You will uh, honor me by riding with me? Oh, certainly. She always came to me with her troubles. This afternoon, she confessed to me she had been mad in love with Danny Mayo. She was in his house the night he died. She saw him killed and never dared to tell because it would have wrecked her career. Why did she suddenly change mind about keeping secrets? Because she had fallen in love with James and hesitated to marry him and perhaps drag him through unpleasant publicity later. Did she name murderer? No, but she did tell me. He was at this moment in Honolulu. I'm certain she would have revealed his name tonight. She was murdered because she knew who killed Danny Mayo. Possible motive? May I ask your uh, continued assistance? Sometimes very difficult to pick up pumpkin with one finger. Uh, had you been driving long? No. At first, I'm pretty bad driver. But now, me and road turn corner same time. Stabbed to heart. Orchids torn from dress, crushed angrily under feet. Pin is missing. Evidence of a struggle. Possibly. The wristwatch is smashed. That establishes the time of the murder. Maybe. Fresh footprints. Most unfashionable hole in one shoe. Fortune could not have smiled on Una. But this is important. Perhaps the motive, after all, was a robbery. Have you changed mind about motive? Not at all. I merely suggest we should keep our minds open. Yes. Excellent idea. This is a confounded outrage. This Jap has locked all the doors on us. Look here. You can't hold us prisoners. Yes, Ken. Orders. Oh, I'll have this Chinese detective thrown off the force for this. This is exceptional occasion, Mr. Ballou. There is old saying, death is a black camel that kneels unbidden at every gate. Tonight, black camel has knelt here. Please forgive overzealous assistant. Miss Fane asked me to give you this as soon as you came. Oh, thank you. Please, this may give the information we seek. What's happened? Light! Ah! What's the matter? Light! Where are the lights? Where are the lights? I got the lights.
Overwhelmed with regret. The important part of letter seems to be absent. Search everyone. Why? They aren't clever enough to do that trick. Too clever to keep letter on person. I am not in mood tonight for turning other cheek, but will return assault with compound battery. You are Butler? When did you last see Miss Fane? About a quarter of eight, when she came downstairs to meet Mr. James. Did you notice anything peculiar in her behavior? Not this evening, but some other time. This morning, I found her crying in her room over a man's photograph. Ah, Kashimo. Clo? Yes. Go to Miss Fane's room. Look for man's photograph. You will show him, please? Just a moment, Jess. Inspector, if you don't mind, I'd like to... You are... Uh... I lived with Miss Fane. She took care of me. I was with Miss O'Neill, Inspector. We were in swimming when... when it happened. What jewelry did she wear tonight? Uh, just a wristwatch and some bracelets. Oh, and a diamond pin that I fastened her orchids with. The missing pin. Orchids? From who? They were from her ex-husband. Ah, an ex-husband. Yes. I should like to see him. He's playing at the Royal Theater. I'll phone. I'll phone. Thank you so much. Miss Fane wore other jewelry tonight? No, nothing else. I think you're mistaken, Miss Julie. She also wore her large emerald ring. You are positive? Yes, sir. That points again to the robbery motive. Do you have to do all this? Orders? That'll be all, Miss Dixon. Thank you so much. This is very interesting. Mr. Ballou, you, your wife, Mr. Van Horn, and Miss Dixon were all in Hollywood then when Denny Mayer was murdered. You all knew him well. Now, just a minute, Mr. Too Soon, or whatever your name is. I want to remind you that we're concerned here with the Sheila Fane murder and not the Nendi Mayo scandal. And if you want to keep us here, I suggest you confine your investigations to what we are here for. Nevertheless, I believe the two cases are connected. You are here in this picture with Miss Fane. And you were a friend of Denny Mayo. I deny that. I was never his friend. You were a guest in his home many times, eating his food and drinking his liquors. Yet you say you were not his friend. How do you account for that? Well, that's an old Hollywood custom. And what is it your business if he was? I'm with you, Van Horn. Let's stand pat and answer no more questions. That's a go. No more answers. You are all suspects. Thank you, Kashimo. Look for footprints on the window of pavilion. May need man. I'll tell you something you ought to know, teacher, if you let us go home. Do, please. I saw a man in a heavy overcoat. He was running from the pavilion, and he had a red streak across his shirt front that was probably blood. Oh, so, man here tonight? We have not seen. Oh, an overcoat on a hot night like this. A big one. Well, that's right, my dear. You stick to your story. Only why not make it a good one? Inspector. Yes? You need a lie detector. Lie detector? Yes, it's an invention that detects instantly when anyone is telling a lie. Oh, I see. You mean a wife. I have one. Do you know whose photograph this is? No, I don't. But maybe I could tell if you put them all together. Look here, Inspector. 
I haven't time to sit around with Chinese picture puzzles. My ship sails at midnight. You are a rejected suitor. But I've given you an airtight alibi. Sorry, but alibi have habit of disappearing like hole in water. Who? <sighs> oh, Kashima, you are zebra. Zebra? What do you mean? Sport model jackass. Yes. But clue, clue, man on beach. Get. You mean get out? No, get man. Thank you. Part of photograph seem absent. Must be very important. Sijana! Sijana! Mudia! Yeah. So sorry. Cook, announce the strike. No dinner. Too late. But those who wish coffee can have in dining room. We'll suggest everybody partake. It will make answering questions easier. Even bagpipe will not speak when stomach is empty. Come on, dear. Oh, I don't think I care for any bagpipe. Oh, come on, dear. Fuck you up. Please. Oh, I guess I will. Please, pardon my attire. I was being a French ambassador and I came just as I left the stage, the moment I got your message. You are former husband of Sheila Fain? Yes, I am Robert Five. When was last time you saw a former wife? Seven years ago, in New York. Is that truth? Very last time? Of course. Strange. Tonight, honorable lady saw you running from pavilion even mistaking red ribbon on shirt for blood. Can you explain? Yes, I can explain. May I speak to you privately, Inspector? Please. Yeah. Under the chair. Are you sure? Sure. 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 And now, Mr. Fife? Did you know Miss Fane, Inspector? I had not pleasure. She was a remarkable girl, a flame with life. No other woman ever meant anything after Sheila left me. I understand. When I heard she was in Honolulu, I, I sent her flowers with a message. The moment she got them, she called me on the telephone. I was at the theater. Apparently dressed and uh, ready for your role? Quite right. I came as quickly as possible. Mm. And you reached here when? Five minutes before eight. Sheila met me on the lawn and went to the pavilion. I was nervous about the time. That's why I know exactly. And then? Then she asked me if I still cared for her. I told her I, I adore her. I took her in my arms. We kissed. Then I told her I would return after the show was over and hurried away. It was then four minutes past eight. I checked it carefully because I was late. And uh, what time did you arrive back in theatre? Five minutes late. The stage manager spoke to me about it. I see. Those few minutes with Sheila may prove embarrassing to me. But I saw her again before she died. I am not sorry. And it's late, Inspector. And it occurred to me you might need some stimulant yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, remain, please. Mr. Fife? No, thank you. One bit for you can't arrest a man for nothing. Yes, can. Clue. What? Clue. Clue. Same she 
Lucius! Who are you? The name might be Smith. Might also be Jones. I prefer Smith. Look, clue and pocket. Temple bronze medal. Third prize. Landscape in oil. Pennsylvania Academy of Arts. <laughs> I see I shall have to confess. Yes, I'm a painter. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, may I inconvenience you, Mr. Smith? Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, please. Were you on beach tonight? If you found my footprints, I dare say I was. A shocking bad pair of shoes, aren't they? What time were you on beach? My friend, you embarrass me. If you will take a stroll down a certain street in this city, you will see my watch hanging in a pawn shop window. I often look at it myself. No matter. You, you were on beach. I was. It's my temporary hotel. Mm. But tonight when I got here, there was a light in the pavilion. And I heard voices inside. Voices? Whose voices? A man's and a woman's. I, I peeked in and, and got a good look at the man. There he is. That's the fellow. I haven't seen a ribbon like that since our ambassador invited me to dinner in Paris. You know, it was the most interesting... You heard the conversation? Yes, they were talking fast. Uh, what about? Well, I heard her tell him... Drop it! I can put an end to this investigation. I killed Sheila Fein. What did you say? Please! You killed Sheila Fein? I did. For what reason? Wanted her to come back to me. I begged and pleaded with her. She wouldn't listen. She laughed at me. She drove me to it. She made me kill her. There you are. That clears me. I want to get that boat. I want to get away from here. Impossible. But I've got to go. Can't you understand? Do you realize what it means to remain here, listening to this talk about the girl I'd hope to marry? Very sorry, Mr. Jaynes, but you cannot leave at present. You say you left here four minutes past eight? Yes, I did. You had already killed Sheila Payne and were back at theater 20 minutes past eight? Yes, I told you all that. You have witness? Yes. Yet at 8.12, Sheila Payne was seen alive and well. If you arrived back at theater at 8.20, it could not be possible for you to be here at 8.12. Journey takes... Fifteen minutes. How do you know Miss Fein was alive at that time? Chinese cook, Wang, talked with deceased lady at 8.12 about lateness of dinner. Of all persons in this room, you are only one who could not have committed murder. Do you mean to say you're going to hold us all? No, 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 no. You may go. But you cannot leave Ireland without Permission of police. You are all under unhappy suspicion. What rot? We can't all be guilty. Your theory is full of holes. It won't hold water. Sponge is full of holes. Sponge holds water. Oh, come on, Rita. Thanks for the pleasant evening. If I were a dose of poison, I'd give myself to you. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, you are two biggest liars in Honolulu. You may also go. I shall know where to find you when I want you. Of course. My address is Sandy Spot, Any Beach, Honolulu. Why did you let Smith and Fife go? Between them, they hold a secret. The way to find Rabbit's residence is to turn Rabbit loose and watch. Name? 
Look. Always happens when conscience tries to speak, telephone out of order. I know how fond you were of Sheila, but you're making a mistake. You're keeping something from Inspector Chan that you ought to tell him. What makes you say that? Well, I know you are. Well, I'm not. You don't know anything of the sort. How dare you say that? What about that emerald ring? The ring? Well, what about it? You had it on your finger. When Inspector Chan asked Anna about it, I saw you turn the stone so it wouldn't be seen. Where's it now? I haven't got it. I don't know anything about it. And I wish you'd please go home. Why? Because I'm tired. Very tired. All right, I'll go. But I'm coming back here tomorrow. This is the time in your life when you need advice from a good, sensible person. I know it, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, then I'll give it to you. Prodigal return. Oh, darling. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. Where have you been? <laughs> there's, there's no time for that, milady. I'm selling a picture. Wonderful. Then you can buy me new dresses and beads and bracelets and everything. Well, well, a few. Oh, and what picture? Yours, the one I gave you. Oh, no, no. You wouldn't take that away from me. Oh, I'll paint you another one. I'll paint you another one tomorrow. But how do you know he will like it? He'll buy it whether he likes it or not, to keep me from talking. What do you mean, coming to my hotel? I knew you'd want to see me. I didn't want to see you in a public place, a hotel where everybody knows me. You should have a better sense. I'm sorry, but you know it's pretty important. Come over here. All right. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. I assure you, it isn't blackmail. It's merely that I thought you might welcome the opportunity of becoming a patron of the arts. If I refuse the honor, then I shall feel it my duty to tell the police. When I was outside that pavilion window, I heard Sheila Fain... Never and... mind. What's the prize? I'm sorry. I hate to have to do this. It is my only chance of getting back to the mainland. Shall we say... Five hundred dollars? Five hundred. Look here, you are not dealing with a millionaire. I am an actor on salary. I'll give you one hundred now and two hundred next week. Uh, that's my limit. Thanks. You have found a report card from school at last. Eh? Hmm. Teachers say you are always at bottom of class. Can't you find better place? No, Pop. All the other places are taken. That is no excuse. Oh, baloney. Hmm. Baloney. Oh, Pop. Who killed Sheila Finn? Yes, Pop. Tell us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have told you all many times now, I do not know. Oh, we don't believe you. Oh, that's a lot of applesauce. Come on, Pop, spill the beans. 
Yeah. 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 The lonely applesauce beans. One would think you all took lessons in grocery store instead of at school. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, mother. Goodbye, mother. Uh, I am gratefully retreating from bosom of honorable family to peace and quiet on murder case. You murder this morning? No, same one. Where we go first? To public library. Who? No. But it might be well to know names of all persons mentioned in uh, Denny Mayo murder. Case finished? Finished. <laughs> Secret of this case harder to determine than Alley Cat's grandfather. Think we make mistake? Who can say? Even wisest man sometimes mistakes Bumblebee for Blackberry. Oh. I got idea. What you gonna do in library? Read newspapers. Huh. Think you're gonna catch him that way? Kashimo. I despair trying to make you a smart man. Soap and water never can change perfume of billy goat. Yes. Uh, who asked for these files? You remember? A young woman. Ever see her before? No, she was a stranger. Can you describe? Well, she was young and very pretty. In fact, she was quite striking. I think I know. Possibly you could come with me for identification? Well, yes, I think so. Thank you so much. Yes, Inspector. This is the girl. You are sure? Absolutely. Thank you so much. You will kindly wait for me in ancient remnants of automobile. Why did you cut out pictures of Denny Mayo from library files? I didn't. You were in library this morning asking for old files of Los Angeles Times. No, I wasn't. You very nice young lady making serious mistake. Please tell truth. Yes, I was in the library this morning. Why did you cut out pictures? I didn't. I didn't do that. Please believe me. Then why did you ask for Los Angeles Times? This morning, someone sent me this. And then? Then I hurried to the library, but there wasn't a word about Chile in any of the articles. Please tell me, did you leave files on table? Yes. Were all pictures of Denny Mayo in papers when you left? Yes, all of them. Huh. Bright spark appears in darkness. Only a very clever man can bite pie without breaking crust. Julie. Why don't you tell the inspector everything? Oh, Jimmy. There is more? Tell him. He'll find out anyway. Sheila's emerald ring isn't missing. I took it off her finger. Why? Because Denny Mayo's name was inside the band. And I took the pieces of the photograph, too. It was his picture. And uh, why all this? Because all her life, Sheila kept her relations with Denny Mayo secret. And now that she's dead, I didn't want them found out. Very kind thought, but have lost valuable time. I will keep this letter from friend. That means something. Now I'll bet you're on the right track, Inspector. Learn from Hen. Never boast about egg until after egg's birthday. There now. Isn't it better to have that off your mind? Yes, Jimmy. You were right. And <laughs> suppose you listen to me for a while. Now that Sheila's gone, what are you going to do? 
I don't care. <laughs> Somebody's got to care. So I've appointed myself for the job. Why don't you stay in Honolulu? Oh, not for the scenery, for a job. The tourist bureau will furnish me with a secretary. I'm entitled to one, and you're it. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you're sweet. But I couldn't stay in Honolulu. That was identical. Both written on the same machine. Thank you so much. Not at all. What? Christian! What are you talking about? Man in public library this morning. Tall man, dark man, same man. Stop smoking cigarette. Tanavera will know someone been in his room. Can't smell now? Kashimo. Can cut off monkey's tail, but he's still monkey. Yes. Thank you so much. That's quite all right, Mr. Chan. Well, Inspector, did you have any happy inspirations during the night? No, <coughs> nothing. Were you in public library this morning? Uh, no, uh, no, I wasn't. Somebody he cut out pictures. Danny Mayo from papers. Uh, really? I can't imagine the motive for that. I can. Somebody afraid to let me see picture of Danny Mayo. Why? Pardon, please. You were so kind this morning. May I ask a few more questions? Certainly be. Please sit down and have a cup of tea with us. Uh, no time. Thank you so much. This morning, you established absolutely perfect alibi for Tanavero. He was with you from before 8 o'clock until half past last night? My oath upon that, sir. I believe uh, implicitly. You have proved utterly impossible for him to have committed murder. Then what more do you want to know? Father, don't get excited. I'm not excited. But you've got to be emphatic when you're dealing with policemen. <laughs> Please, no offense. But this morning, you told me that Mr. Tanavero lived with you when he was a young man in Australia. He did, and a nice boy he was. Tanavero, very odd name. Was that what he called himself then? No, it was not. What name did he offer at time? Well, Mr. Shan, he asked us not to tell his real name. Why? He said he was done with it. And he asked that we think of him as Mr. Tanavero. This is very serious matter. You are honorable, law-abiding citizens. Law needs your help. We must know real name. Well, you know, this, this is an awfully difficult situation. I think Mr. Shan's right, Father. We did enough when we swore to his alibi, and if you don't tell, I will. Why should I have to be ashamed of his real name? Thank you, madam. Deign to mention name, please. In Australia, his name was Arthur Mayo. Mayo? He told you this morning he was alone when he came to us. I can't think why he said that. It's not true. He and his brother came to us together. His brother? Yes, of course. His brother, Danny Mayo. Please. Does he look like brother? Oh, yes, very much. Ah. Pictures in newspapers. Please excuse me. You are Mr. Fife? Yes. You actor in theater? Yes. Then who was you? Why did you shoot him? Shoot him? Shoot who? Artist, Mr. Smith. You are afraid you have to pay more money, so you shoot him. Are you crazy? I don't know what you are talking about. Police! Police! Murderer! Murderer! Are you killing me? Murderer! Murderer! You. Murderer. One moment, please. What's the matter here? Last night he tried to kill Smith. Oh, she's mad, Inspector. You know that he's in soul. Smith, shot. Where is he now? He's in my house. He's dying. And he told me this is the man that shot him. Uh, we must go to him at once. You will come too, Mr. Fife. I have nothing to do with it. 
Then you compel me to make arrest? All right. Well, you got me, didn't you? Perhaps you were right. But was the painting really as bad as that? What makes you think I would do such a thing? I don't blame you. Perhaps I'd have done the same thing in your place. But what does it matter? I'm shoving off, Inspector. And you might hang an innocent person, so, so I'm going to tell you the truth. You can't help anyone, don't. I was at the window when this man was talking to Sheila Fane, and I heard her tell him that she just confessed a crime to a man named Tarnavero. What crime? She told him that she was the person who killed Denny Mayo. Is this true? Yes. He told her for the first time that he already had a wife, that he married a young girl in England a girl who was desperately in love with him. He had sent money to her to come to him. The bitter quarrel that followed, Sheila shot him. So, it was Sheila Payne who killed Denny Mayo. Why did you tell me last night that you killed her? I thought for a moment I could save her memory from, from this. Then who did kill Sheila Fane? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. I went away. I came back later. She was on the floor. There was a diamond pin lying near her. I was broke. Desperate. I took it. Give it to him, Luana. Part of pin missing. And here's something for you, Mr. Fife. Something the native doctor extracted. A bullet. Yeah. A, a bit of penetrating criticism from a connoisseur of art. <laughs> Mr. Five. You are under arrest. But, Charlie, the newspapers are running me ragged. Now, you're working on the Sheila Fane case, and you arrest a man named Fife for the murder of Smith. What are you trying to do to me? I want an arrest on the Fane case, and Tanavero's the man I want. Tanavero, not man you want. He did not commit murder. Oh, he didn't, eh? He discovered the Fane woman murdered his brother, and four hours later, she's found dead. What about alibi of McMaster's? Oh. There is one more clue left. Heel that crushed orchids and broke this pin may furnish evidence. I am going to Sheila Fane's house. Well, Charlie, I'll give you one more chance. But I am going with you. Okay.
person who threw this evidently thinks a long life is only extra time for more troubles. Yes, but where did it come from? Did you ring, sir? No. Pardon. <laughs> Mistake. Thank you so much. Please wait. Wait, nothing. You want to get us all killed? I'm going to nail that bird now. No. We nail, all right. Person who tried to extinguish me does not want scratches to be found. Pin scratches. Broken piece of this pin is still in rubber heel. Man who sat in this chair last night was murderer. Charlie, I think you're right. Shall I call them in? All here? Yes. I have everyone who was here last night. One moment. Fix chairs. Huh? Don't you see, dear, there's nothing else to do. Stay in Honolulu and marry me. Oh, I don't know, Jimmy. You see... Oh, come on. Just this once. In conclusion, must ask you all to imaginary feast. Enter, please. Look here. You can count me out of this hocus-pocus right now. Listen, Mr. Ballou, I asked you all to come here this afternoon as a personal favor to me. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Will you be seated, please, in chairs where you sat last night at coffee? I can't remember where I did sit. I do. I sat right over here. Well, I sat next to you, Jimmy. I know I sat next to you. So I suppose I sat next to you. Just like luck, you did. I sat here, I believe. <coughs> No, no, I sat here, I remember. <coughs> what did I tell you? No. There is some mistake. Wait. Wait, nothing. Make the arrest now. What what are you are you please, about? just one moment. Has to be mistake. Yes, sir? Think clearly. Last night, after guests left, other people sat at this table? Yes, sir. We'd had no dinner, so we just sat down for a bit of coffee. We needed it badly. We? Who? Miss Anna and I, sir. Where is she now? Will you get her, please? Just a moment. Anna, keep seated, Mr. Tanavero. Sorry, I prefer to stand. Last night, uh, you had coffee here at this table with uh, Jessup? Yes, sir. Where did you sit? Why, I sat right here. Please excuse. Must make odd requests. Will you be good enough, please, to remove right shoe? Why should you? Well, certainly. You are all witnesses. Last night, when you stamped orchids on the feet, you committed important blunder. 
You killed Sheila Payne. No. No, no. Yes. I did. Anna, don't be a fool. Find it out. I warn you that whatever you say will be used against you as evidence. Why did you kill her? Because I am Mrs. Denny Mayo. Anna, don't. Oh, what does it matter now? What difference does it make? What difference can anything make? What else do you want to know? Then it was not by coincidence that you were working for Sheila Payne as maid? No. Inspector, I am Arthur Mayo, Danny's brother. From the first, I suspected Miss Payne and placed Anna here to watch her. Oh. When did Mr. Tanabero tell you that Sheila Payne murdered Danny Mayo? Yesterday evening. We were going to wait until the dinner party was over and then have her arrested. I was sure I could control myself that long. Then some flowers came. The orchids. And when I took them into her, right in front of me, she seized Denny's picture and tore it. Tore it viciously into bits. That may seem like a little thing to you. But to me, it was like killing Denny all over again. Later, when she went into the pavilion, you followed her. Oh, don't ask me to tell you the rest. Inspector, I left my profession in London and went to Hollywood to find out who murdered my brother. But Anne and I had never intended to do more than hand him over to the law. I didn't mean to kill him. I'm sorry. My mistake was in telling this poor child last night. Now that she has confessed, I want to share with her equally whatever fate lies ahead. Very sorry, Mrs. Mayo, but you are under arrest. No, you don't. Stop, stand her. back. You're never going to take her. She's coming with me. Come on. Oh, no, no. Please, don't mind. No. I got him. Take me a gun, please. Hey, you! This is gun that shot Smith. Yes, I killed him because he knew too much. And you know too much. Nobody would have known anything about it if it hadn't been for you. I'm sorry I didn't get you with that knife. Blue! Blue! Too late. Save for next case. 